everybody, and welcome to, I believe, the 15th episode of OGT Live. Uh, and I realize it's a little bit unorthodox. It is 2 o'clock in the afternoon on a Friday, but what better time to smoke a cigar? I'm really excited for this LCA's drop. So for those who do or do not know, we became part of the LCA, I believe it was uh, October, possibly, of last year. Um, and I'm sure Clark will, might be able to help us out on when the the f first date was, but it was uh, the first drop that happened, uh, which was the death bucket from Matt Booth. And we have been sold ever since. We enjoy all the cigars that come through on uh, the LCA. And this month is no exception. Now, uh, the difference between this month and previous months is um, we also joined LCA Plus, which you not only are getting the normal LCA release dropped to our shop, but also the Plus as well, an extra add on. Uh, which I'm sure we will be hearing more of kind of what's behind LCA plus and what really started that. But uh, without further ado, uh, that cigar would be the hot cake, hot chocolate cake from HVC. HVC is a huge user of, um, of Aganorsa tobacco. So um, here in the shop, we have quite a bit of Aganorsa tobacco um, and we're a huge fan of it. So having this added to the repertoire is awesome. And it is called the hot chocolate cake as a sign with the foot band and those on Instagram, if you can kind of see that as well. Um, I have not tried the cigar. And in fact, I have not been able, been able to get my hands on the original hot cakes by HVC either. So really excited to uh, go ahead and try this. Um, if you're on Instagram, if you're on YouTube, um, we do have this cigar available. We have it available in singles or we also have it available in five packs online in our website. So if you get a chance, make certain that you click on the link in this uh, video that will direct you to our website as it is still available. And from there, you may purchase your hot chocolate cake. It's gonna be phenomenal, very limited. We got a few people watching here. Hey, Eric, gotta go to work. Uh, thank you so much. Awesome, I'm glad you love the community. Um, and it's just, it's awesome to join with you. So, and <laughs> change your name for Miz and Misfits. All right, well, Eric, we know who you are now. Um, but if you have any questions, uh, any of those watching, feel free to drop it in the comments. If you smoke anything, if you happen to have the opportunity to join in a cigar um, this fine Friday afternoon, I would love to know uh, what you're smoking, and we'll go from there. Without further ado, uh, let us please welcome Clark from Pravada Cigar Club and LCA to the show. So thank you so much for joining on. Eric, great. Thank you for having me. It's a pleasure to be here. Awesome. Awesome. So uh, are you smoking anything right now? Or are you going to be smoking anything? I am smoking something. I am smoking a uh, a test blend from a okay. manufacturer. That's about all I can say right now. <laughs> I've had a couple of these, and there is a good possibility that this might turn to something that you see used in some capacity. Uh, okay. Okay. Whether this year or next year for LCA or Pravada. Uh, probably a good indication that it might end up becoming something because uh, I've smoked several of them already. So, uh, <laughs> you know, when you're trying, trying to hold up the same test blend because you like it, that's a good sign for that uh, for that blend. It's a good, it passed the test at that point, right? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So Man, right off the bat. Chocolate cake, correct? It is, it is. Right off the bat, it is um, not lacking in flavor in the least. My goodness. I uh, so we we were talking to Rainier several several months ago now when we were first talking about uh, doing some kind of exclusive with that blend for for Pravada. Okay. Wow. And so he gave us a few different sizes. Said, "Hey, these are a few examples of what we could do for a Pravada exclusive." And we're like, "This one, this size right here, we." personally think that this is our favorite size even compared to the uh three regular production hot cake sizes on shelves okay. so we're yeah. extremely excited to be able to get this cigar we think it's just absolutely decadent and we call it hot chocolate cake we thought in this size and you can tell me if you agree as you smoke it down it was just okay. extremely rich very yeah. chocolate cake right off the bat and all the way through well, I mean, and it's it's on two ends. You, I mean, it fills the mouth not only in smoke and flavor, though. I mean, it's not like this. Okay, it's starting to ramp up. It's it's right out the gate. Um, Jimmy uh, Dougherty is on Instagram live, actually watching, and he's wondering if that is Clark's voice he hears. It is, in fact, 
Sorry, we can't split the screen on Instagram. I realize it's a bit disconjointed, but uh, yes, we are live with Pravada Cigar Club. So, Clark, I know we kind of talked about this. Um, I think it was two months ago when we when we dropped the uh, Shishkaban when you guys did the Shishkaban. Uh -huh. <laughs> yeah. That was uh, uh, three months ago now, actually. Okay, three months. Yeah. Well, how time um, flies. I will say. Well, and last last LCA was the Vince, I believe. Yes. That cigar was awesome. That cigar is amazing. Um, and it was actually my first introduction to Blackbird Cigar Company with Jonas um, Santana. We actually did a live with him when we smoked the Vince for the first time. That is an amazing cigar. It absolutely is. And we're really uh, fortunate to be able, be able to showcase uh, Blackbird and Jonas's capacity because I think that they are uh, definitely up and coming. They've got a lot of great stuff. They've done some other exclusive stuff for Pravada that we have. Um, and okay. all of this has been really phenomenal. And so uh, it's always exciting when you can uh, have a good cigar and an exciting release and also at the same time uh, give credit to a manufacturer or a brand that is new and maybe mm -hmm. doesn't have the full recognition they deserve yet. Right, right. Well, and honestly, because of, and I think this is what I love about Pravada and LCA so much, is because of the introduction like that, it caused me to seek out his other blend. Um, and we're very much considering taking it on Blackbird here inside the humidor. You know, that's, it's really funny that you bring that up because that's actually just segues into a great story because I guess not a story, but a, a collection of stories. But when we were first starting the LCA, one of the most common um, criticisms uh, or concerns that people had was this is going to make my reps for the brands that uh, sell me these products angry. Like it's going to be, I'm kind of, I don't want to hurt the reps. Like I don't want to buy a room one-on-one -on -one exclusive through you guys. I'd mm -hmm. rather buy a room one-on-one -on -one exclusive to my reps. And uh, I always had to explain that that couldn't be further from uh, mm -hmm. the scenario because right, it, right. The reps are going to love this because what happens when you get this really amazing room one on one that everybody falls in love with is more people are going to start asking for room one on one at your shop, and mm -hmm. that's held completely true. And yeah. uh, so I, it's a, it's a, just a you know a real win win win. It's good for consumers and for small businesses and for right. all at the same time. Well, and and speaking from <clears throat> directly from the source of owning a brick and mortar shop um, and partnering with you guys. In, to me, I mean, the honest truth, nothing could be further from the truth on that aspect. I have not at all felt this like at war with LCA or Pravada. It's always been a help. It's always been a great resource and education. And it also, um, it puts so many names, I feel like that do maybe don't get the enough recognition on the map where people, are, people will uh, say, oh yeah, I've heard of this cigar. I've heard of that cigar. Normally they would not. And so, um, yeah, I think it's a complete yeah, it like so. You're saying that you you're considering taking in Blackbird now after last month's release. Have you seen uh, like you do carry Espinosa or Room One Hundred One? Um, like Espinosa is definitely on our radar for sure. Okay, <laughs> but like after you carry after an LCA release from a manufacturer, do uh, sales for that brand in your shop start to go up also? If for something um, you want to carry, not not as much yet, um, <laughs> but okay. But, but what's really interesting is that it's an ongoing conversation between Jonas and I now. Like, I never even knew him. And we're texting back and forth, messaging back and forth. We're actually going to TPE next week. So we're planning on stopping by his booth, trying more stuff, sitting down, and seeing what we can work out. So really Absolutely. exciting. Yeah, he's, he's a great guy to have, uh, have in, the, in, the, in the portfolio for sure. Yeah. Okay, so what I think, and we got a few people joining on Instagram. Mike, how's it going? Um, what I think is really special for this May release is that we get two cigars from the LCA. What is the thought process behind LCA Plus and how did that come about? Sure. So LC, we we hadn't thought exactly what we were going to call it or how we were going to present it, but we've known for a while and we've been preparing for several months to start offering more cigars to LCA shops. And there's a couple of reasons for that. One, okay. we started the LCA uh back in june when covid was at its peak worst it was devastating brick and mortar businesses it was terrible yeah. 
And yeah. so the big goal of it in the beginning was to support local shops, keep traffic coming in at a time when they really, really needed it. And to say it's been a success in that regard is a complete understatement. It's been mm -hmm. tremendously successful and we're extremely proud and extremely excited uh, of where it is right now. But mm -hmm. as we've gotten more into the space and started paying more attention to the uh, business climate of brick and mortars uh, in the in the cigar space, we realize there's a potentially a larger problem looming on the horizon, which is the uh, trend towards the commoditization of cigars, really okay. by uh, online discount shops. Uh, and the thing is, is that there are an increasingly large amount of sites online, not even just the big giants anymore, but more and more pop-up shops that are really gaining a lot of traction that are selling cigars for prices that frankly scare the shit out of me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> because I mean, if, if, if people can go online and buy cigars for basically the same price wholesale that a, a, a store would pay for them, the younger, you know, the millennial cigar consumer is smart. They're savvy. They will figure out how to get to these sites. And mm -hmm. we're going mm -hmm. to move in a direction where, uh, you know, cigars are treated as a bushel of corn. You know, the lowest bidder wins the price. And we completely lose the artisanal aspect and the craft of cigars, what makes cigars what they right. are. Right. Uh, it's not just bad for cigar culture overall, but for brick and mortars, if your business is reliant on these brands, that are av readily available online, it's going to be like Best Buy being the showroom for Amazon, right? Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. so our whole goal is to start slowly introducing more and more products uh, to brick and mortar shops that we have control over, that we know aren't going to go to online sites that aren't going to get pumped out the back door for pennies on the dollar. Right, and right. So the way that uh hopefully slowly you can hedge against this risk for shops by getting them more stuff in their shops that isn't going to go on sale online uh -huh. and going to continue to create more engagement with their consumers uh -huh. because it's not just the one lca release anymore uh you could walk into your shop and uh, always know no matter what time of month you're going to find something interesting something new a rotating selection of cool products. right, right. well and, and on, on the tail end of that i feel like it's part of the brick and mortar owner's job that, I mean, LCA is a great help and it's more of a springboard in, exactly. in, the, in the sense of now, once you, like in the sense of like the Vince, great cigar, where does it go from there? What is the engagement from there? And unfortunately I feel like I've been to other brick and mortars um, to where it's kind of just a cigar is a cigar type thing. And it's really right. not the experience. And that's part of going to the shop, sitting in the lounge, talking with people is that's really, you can't put a price tag on it. Absolutely. Yes, it might be more expensive, but it's it's yeah, definitely not a, a price. So, so and that's that's how the LCA Plus came around. Then is is more product than sifting through. Yeah. So we would like to get to the point where um, there's going to be a few different cigars through LCA Plus each month, uh, and it's exactly like what we were talking about with Blackbird and Jonas. We want to use it as a springboard, like you said, to introduce uh, more very boutique, unheard of brands that have mm -hmm. no distribution. Because I mean, we're really like a like a like a, a lightning rod for for tiny up and coming brands. Like we find each other, you know. That's right, right. <laughs> and so I mean, a lot of these companies make really good cigars. Like we had, um, where you're, you're a member of Pravada, right? You get the Pravada monthly box, right? Um, I mean, actually. I'm I'm planning on seeing if I can join. I've been shut out of the, the club because I got on the bandwagon too late. So I need to join. We we have to make that happen really really soon. Then we'll make that happen. But we we had a couple of months ago. If there's any members listening, we had a cigar called El Diablo del Desert Desierto, Demon of the Desert. One of the coolest looking bands I've ever seen, made by a really small company out of New Mexico, I want to say, called Purple Sky. If you go to their instruments, it's really bizarre and weird, and like just <laughs> a 
crazy pictures, but damn, if they don't make a really good cigar. And it's a yeah. really cool story these guys have. You know, they're basically working out of like like a like a mobile shed in Arizona, but just making <laughs> crazy good stuff. And so we we want to start giving these brands more of a platform and kind of being the facilitators between getting some of these smaller brands into uh, yeah. brick and mortar shops and being kind of these small brands uh, advisors and and guide and guidance in this industry and suggesting they stay away from the online shops. They're going to discount their right. product. It's bad for shops, but it's also really bad for the value of their brand also. Definitely. We, we got a comment from Jimmy here saying the experience of a shop makes up for the cheaper cigar prices. But on one hand, the brick and mortars need to pick up their game. He does say OGT is ahead of the game, so I appreciate the comment. Um, but it's definitely more that experience. For, for instance, as I say, we're sold out of the barbecue pig because some of that inventory I put aside and say we, we will do a formal tasting night. So tonight we're lighting it up. we got about 21 of us uh, tonight. We're going to be pairing it with burning chair bourbon. We're going to cut it at the same time, experience it together. And to me, that is really the fun of it, the experience of it. So that we're looking forward to it. Brick and mortar experience. Um, that's something that you can't replace with an online experience. And right. uh, that's why we're so dedicated towards uh, supporting brick and mortars however we can, because we really believe without brick and mortars, there is no cigar culture. You lose all of it. And I and I appreciate it. Um, I will comment on this this hot chocolate cake. Yes, I, I am. I am getting a a like a frosting sweetness for sure. A like it started off a little earthy and as kind of signature HVC Aganorsa to me. It's got some of that like sweet pepper to it at the first light up, but that's starting to die off. I'm getting more of that like deep espresso mm -hmm. chocolate sweetness. Um, I I'm curious to see the barbecue pig tonight because. Um, in all honesty, when I saw this was the lineup, I was more excited about the hot, the chocolate cake than I was the barbecue pig, just because it's in my wheelhouse. It's it's the flavor wheelhouse that I love. You know, and I'd actually be inclined to agree with that. Just I, I tend to lean and gravitate towards more dessert like cigars, more cocoa and coffee uh, type tones, and so certainly I I would agree that HVC hot chocolate cake is very much in my wheelhouse. But uh, okay. The, the the barbecue pig is such a unique experience, not just because of the shape, which certainly is unique, and there's a lot of story behind that and and why that this was such a limited release. But um, I was actually talking with a few people last night, and I was uh, expressing that there's something about this cigar that really does make you feel like, damn, I need to go outside and start grilling up some barbecue and soaking the <laughs> And crack open a, a cheap American beer and have a barbecue. You know, it really does <laughs> great. feel. Like it, it does have very characteristically barbecue tones to it for sure. But something beyond just that, it really does just feel like like a cigar to uh, bring in the summer with. You want to go outside and celebrate. Uh, and tell me if you agree after you smoke it. Okay, but definitely. I, very uh, interesting experience uh, with that. With that awesome. cigar. I always appreciate when a cigar can kind of uh, pull out an emotional response, right? When it makes yeah. you feel, uh, when it makes you feel something like a, right, the scent, like the desire to go outside and be in the sun. Yeah, definitely. Uh, we got a question from uh, Josh uh, watching. He's a regular here, and he's actually here in the studio. Is there any chance do you see in the foreseeable future of a possible Cameroon LCA release? He's a Cameroon fanatic, so. <laughs> That's a great question, actually. I'll let you know that I don't think that we've got anything slated for the immediate short term, like the next few months anyways, it's Cameroon. But Brian and I both actually love Cameroon Wrapper and we want to start doing more work with it. So certainly I hope that sometime in the future there will be a Cameroon. Related. Okay. Uh, yeah. uh, I've been inspired now. I will try to make it <laughs> personal. Uh, I'm sure. It It'll, it'll make him happy for sure. Um, so uh, now you say there's a lot behind the barbecue being being so limited. I'm uh, sorry, the barbecue pig being limited, the size in particular. If you don't mind filling us in kind of how, what the evolution was on that? Sure. So um, the, the pig Vitolo, and for those, I mean, for the those of you who might not know, it was invented by Steve Saka at Drew Estate. I mentioned that because we uh, feel the need to kind of give some props and some cred here to uh, yeah. Saka and Drew Estate for inventing this size in the first place. But it is notoriously 
difficult to roll. Uh, anytime that you've got a cigar that isn't a Parejo, that's not a cylinder or a box press cigar, you start introducing any kind of variation, it gets harder to roll. Uh, and okay. the, the amount of rollers who are skilled enough to uh, for, execute that kind of construction gets uh, less and less. And in the entire Quesada Cigars factory, there was one uh, buncher wrapper pair, one rolling okay. thing that rolled every single pick there was because they were the only ones who were still oh, able to okay. roll this cigar with good construction. So yeah. every cigar you have, you know, I can't think of their names right now, but shoot, I, I, we, I, I got their names, I've got their pictures somewhere. I, mean, I, I should have gotten it before I came out tonight, but there uh, are two men who rolled every single one. I think that's really incredible. And oh, so yeah. just because of that, it was really hard to get more than a certain amount. And also, uh, Quesada uh, is, has been very mysterious with this blend, even with us. We have no idea what the blend is at all. No indication. I, I, have really? no, I can tell you just from smoking it, I would venture a very strong guess that it's got a mix of Honduran, Dominican, and Nicaraguan tobacco at a minimum, likely okay. even more based on the complexity. Okay. But I don't know, but what they did tell us is that it was very difficult to source, and uh, it was difficult to get the uh, uh, enough tobacco at the quality uh, yeah. at the necessary to okay. pull off this blend. And so, for those two reasons combined, uh, this release was, like you said, a lot more limited than uh, yeah. the other LCA release. It was the most limited to date. And uh, wow. clearly, I think a lot of shots from the country are feeling that today uh, as yes. they're sitting yes. out in record-breaking time. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, I it, you know, have been full today of people asking, where can I find this? And my answer has been, I, I really don't know anymore. <laughs> I'm yeah. <out> <laughs> <laughs> which is which is a decent problem to have for sure mm -hmm. um someone i think was here yesterday and they're like oh man you got to give me two and i was like well no i can only do one per person and they're like come on i was like, believe me i'd love to sell you a box if i could but i can't do that that was a conversation with me in the shops hey i'd love to give you five bundles but i've only yeah. got two. <laughs> yeah yeah so um if you had to take perhaps an educated guess at what you think the wrapper might be would you have a guess I want to guess it would be Ecuadorian Habano just on the feel of it, but okay. I, I'm not completely, I'm really not completely sure. I'm, I'm really not. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I, yeah. It, it's almost certainly Habano just, but I'm, I'm not sure if it's Ecuadorian Habano or not, but certainly it's an interesting blend of tobacco. Uh, you can tell just by the, <laughs> the complexity yeah. that's getting out of this. Okay. Awesome. So, uh, and for those of you guys that are watching, uh, we are out of the barbecue pig. However, there is a link in this video for the hot chocolate cake. If you are one who enjoys a sweet chocolate, almost espresso, it's got, it's got amazing burn line. I haven't touched this thing up once. The ash continues on. Um, and if you're a fan of also Nicaraguan Aganorsa tobacco, this is right up your alley. Limited amounts. So click on the link. You can buy up to five as a five pack or even a single if you want. And we'll ship those out to you. But I highly recommend amend it. I am enjoying this immensely. Really good stick. Yeah, they did a great job with that one. We're really, really lucky to have that. They did. So what? What? how did the relationship between the between Quesada and you guys start? Did, did one contact the other? Um, or have you been working together for a while? You know what, actually, that's a really good question. And that's where I wish I had my partner, Brian, here right now, but he's off taking <laughs> something else. I actually have had, personally, have had fairly limited contact uh, with Quesada. We uh, were a real team in that sense, and we uh, frequently divide and conquer when it comes to uh, okay. relationships with, with brands and taking on projects. Yeah. And so, uh, that that's really been all Brian's doing. I don't fully know how that started or who contacted who, uh, but I know that um, this has been, we're really excited because Quesada has some good stuff. We've been wanting to do collaboration with them for a while. And I think that this is going to really be a great foundation for more uh, business and more partnership down the road. You might be seeing more Quesada releases. So we yeah. got call from them yesterday saying, oh my God, what is this? We've never seen this much excitement about anything before. How can we help? Like, <laughs> <laughs> Cool. Cool. Like, you know, great. Like we're, we're really excited. Again, I think Quesada is a kind of slept on 
brand. They don't get enough recognition. Yeah. And this is really shining a spotlight on just how good they are yeah. in making cigars. Awesome. We uh, Jimmy is remarking that uh, he says that Clark needs to come out to the shop here at Oak Glen and have the experience. If you're ever in the area, we would love to have you. Brian, any one of you guys, just to yes. sit, talk, and have a smoke sometime. Please, yes, thank you. We're uh, I'm about to I'm gonna get my second vaccination in uh, about a week, and then well, it's back to traveling. We'll walk okay. <laughs> yeah. I'd do love you to think? To see sometime. Do you see you got you uh, Provada Cigar Club or LCA being represented or even attending uh, like PCA at all in the future? We're not sure about PCA um, because we're, we, we are going to be at TPE next week. Uh, oh, you are. We are. Yeah, we'll be there. Are you going to be there? Yeah, I'll try to. I'll try to meet you in person. That'd be awesome. Well, I'd love to shake your hand and we can we can share a share a drink and a cigar together. I'll yeah, up. yeah, that'd be great. But no, I think that um, we're going. On one hand, we feel compelled to to start showing up to some of the industry events and trade shows because I think that there's some people in the industry who look at Pravada kind of like we're not really a part of the industry. We're kind of like this like weird ancillary outside like company that just kind of like happens to also make mm. some cars, uh, which, uh, you know, I, I, I kind of get to an extent uh, because we don't show up to these things. We've never gone before. And yeah. so we, wanna, we do want to to go and really, you know, be part of this industry and part of this community. Yeah. yeah. Um, but we, I really think that in, in, a, in a very – uh, just a practical business sense that we don't pr really fit into what happens at trade shows because it a lot, it's really for retailers to get product from from brands, new launches and stuff. Right. And we're not a retailer in a traditional sense. And um, yeah, so we're not really we're, we sell cigars differently than anybody else through the LCA. So right. I, would be, I think kind of a uh, we're not really sure what we do there except why. Right. Right. Hi, but by the same token, walking around saying hi and smoking good cigars is not a bad way to spend a couple of days. So. Right, right. <laughs> well, and I know there's got to be, unfortunately, a bit of business mixed in with the pleasure of it. But I mean, honestly, all you guys do is bring your pink couch, set it up, and I will guarantee it will be full the entire show. <laughs> I love that. Yeah, we're going to have to take down a trailer across the country to, to get it. <laughs> I love yeah. that the pink couch is really is not a life for its own becoming an icon. <laughs> so so with, with like LCA headquarters, Pravada Cigar Club headquarters, you also have kind of that that pink couch setup. Is that a lounge? Is that more of like an interviewing lounge? Like what kind of role does that play? Sure. So we've got a, a, a YouTube studio that is uh, separate from from our warehouse, so, so there's nothing that goes on in in the room I'm in actually right now, except for the shooting of videos. And so I, I actually I'll give you a little behind the scenes tour right now. We've got oh, wow. we've got four different sets. Okay. Each wall, we've got a, we actually have built this new set. This is the corner of the room right here. That's going to be a new set. We've got the pink couch over here. Then on one wall, behind okay. me, we've got another wall, another set with yeah. The, awesome painting that a uh, member of the club who is a very famous artist actually his name's aunt ben he's uh he's been commissioned by hbo to do a lot of stuff so certainly uh way too big of a deal for us but he was generous <laughs> enough to to make this awesome piece of uh artwork for us that's and awesome we've got one other set over here you can't see it very well in the darkness but uh this is our youtube uh setup over here where all the all the filming happens all the different looks it just depends yeah uh, yeah. Which was the camera's facing. <laughs> nice. Awesome. Well, I mean, in similar respect, you can kind of see uh, the painting behind me. That was actually painted by my brother. Oh, uh, that's cool. Yeah, yeah, that he did for OGT. Um, right now, we're kind of in our, like, private smoking room. It seats about seven. We're kind of a smaller operation. Our bigger area is our patio outside. Um, but, yeah, no, that's awesome. I saw the latest um, – it might have been the latest, maybe second to the latest video that uh, Brian released about having some spots open in the membership and seeing that painting in the back. And it looks great, especially on film. It looks really good. Yeah, so there's no excuse anymore, Eric. The club's open right now. We've still got, mm -hmm. a, got a couple of dozen spots. Now's your chance to, to jump on board. Is it, okay. is it open today? It's open right now. Damn. Right All right. I had to decide how to do that. <laughs> <laughs> no, we 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 had we've gotten to the point now where 
pretty much everybody in the club is here for the long haul. Uh, we're not really losing very many members at all. And so today we had 103 spots uh, open in Frivada Cigar Club. And, wow. uh, you know, every, every you know, six months, a year from now, I think whenever we have a few openings, we'll just open them up on a given day uh, and let in new members. But um, I think it's uh, the openings are going to become increasingly uh, fewer and far between as, right. uh, as people. Everybody that's here now is really... Uh, here by choice, they've really sorted themselves out, and we're all mm -hmm. really dedicated parts of this community now. Yeah, yeah. So, and I think you kind of filled this in the last time we had you on. Um, but for those who don't know that are watching, kind of first time, well, how did you get involved with Pravada? How did how did that start? So I've been involved with Pravada since a little over two years on it. Two two years ago now. Okay. I. I, I want to call it the very early days. It wasn't quite the very early days, but it, it was the early days. It was uh, it was just Brian and his wife, Ophelia, when I came on board. <laughs> so okay. basically, Brian had been – I'll give you guys the quick, the quick story here. Basically, yeah. Brian, the owner, uh, had been living in Pennsylvania in a big house with his wife. They'd been flipping the house for about a year. And during that time, he'd been really getting in cigars and amassed – a massive collection of cigars that took up a full room in this house in, in rural Pennsylvania. And then he was moving to LA uh, where Ophelia's family lives. So they're moving to clo be closer with family. They're moving into like an 1100 square foot uh, apartment. Right. And he's like, holy shit, like these rooms, like this cigar room is going to take up the entire apartment. I need to sell these cigars. And Brian had come from a background uh, of being a big sneaker collector, a big sneaker head, as he said. Okay. Yeah. And so he had always played the game of collecting sneakers to sit on them to then flip them later, right? Because okay. uh, if you've got a limited sneaker, it's going to go up in value uh, yeah. on the resale market. And Brian was thinking that's exactly what's going to happen with these cigars, right? He's buying and collecting really cool limited drop cigars. And now he's going to try to sell them. And he was absolutely dismayed to find that people weren't even willing to give him what they were worth when they first went on sale, let alone any kind of premium for them. Yeah. He's like, wow, what the hell? I have to get rid of these cigars. And he's kind of heartbroken, honestly, that, that nobody wants to appreciate how special these cigars were. And so his thought was, listen, if I'm going to sell my cigars at a discount, you're at least going to uh, you know, understand why they're in special, why they're special, why they're important. Okay. We started the club with all the detailed writing and the notes, just kind of as a way to give his cigars a good home, if you would. <laughs> so uh, that's how we, and then it, 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 it started very small, but yeah. it was a passion project. And it, it grew to a point when he was living in LA with his wife, where once again, Again, there were too many cigars in the apartment, not necessarily of his own, but cigars for the business. And they realized, okay, we got to get out of here. We got, we have to go to Florida, uh, you know, where tobacco tax is a lot more favorable if we're really going to make this right. business work. Because they, they really started to see that it could be something special. And so okay. a few months after Brian got to Florida is when I met him. How I met him was a yeah. co-worker of mine at a cigar lounge that I was managing at the time named Smokey, uh, joined Pravada Cigar Club. Having no idea who Brian was, just heard about the club and signed up. And he's okay. like in the cigar or the box to work one day. Like, guys, look at this. This is really cool, right? And I was like, yeah, this is really cool. This is right my alley. Exactly what I love about cigars. And so Smokey and Brian had been emailing and they kind of became uh, acquaintances. And Brian okay. came to the lounge one day and Smokey introduced me to him. And Brian and I just right away really head off we were uh, okay. very good friends quite quickly and um uh, i just kind of just wheeled my way into the corporation <laughs> and here i am it just uh i just saw the value that the uh saw the potential that the company had it was yeah. right on it, right before it started to grow at really fast speeds and i saw that potential and i was really passionate about it and uh so i just kind of gotten right at the ground floor and uh as the demands of the company has, have grown i've uh just taken a lot of a lot of different roles with it as as, as we've grown and yeah. it's, it's been a really fun journey for me and yeah. uh, ryan and i have forged a really special relationship uh, as a result basically growing this uh 
this this company together and he's been a really great mentor for me um okay. you've got a lot more business experience than i do uh having run a couple of businesses before this and so it's been uh really just one of the coolest experiences uh of my life I'm very lucky nice to, uh, nice have, have and, and 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 starting off as you say uh provided with small scale uh how many members are you guys at now so we're right around 7500 and that's where we like to okay. keep Okay. That was kind of our goal all along. And we don't, we really can't go much beyond that number. Yeah. And really keep uh, things truly limited. That, that's kind of the number that we knew for, for buying and for scheduling that we need to be at if we yeah. want to truly continue to be the, the, the rare, uh, the exclusive cigar of the month level. Okay. Yeah. Well, and I imagine too, I mean, 7,500. Just trying to keep up with who people are talking back when you get questions. I mean, it's more than a full time job with that many members. So it's really cool to see that grow and that really just progress into. I mean, it, it, it now it's 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 a rare thing. If if someone comes in, they really enjoy cigars and they want a few boutique lines, maybe they haven't tried. And Provada Cigar Club comes up. It's a rare thing if they haven't heard of Provada Cigar Club. It's it's definitely made its mark, and it's an awesome it's an awesome subscription. Uh, and it's something that we, it's a lot of work, but something that we're really proud of that we really put a lot of effort into maintaining personal relationships with all of our members. We really try to email uh, and, and engage with our members as much as possible. Um, we really want to uh, keep this community truly close knit and, uh, and, and really know everybody as much as possible. Um, in the in this community and that's something that's a big priority of brian's and uh i have to uh, he, he spends at least four hours a day responding to emails from uh from members and um uh, I, I think that uh, i think that that shows in the, yeah. uh, in the kind of uh, uh loyalty that people display to, uh towards them. definitely definitely um well yeah getting into uh the second third here um the cigar is just i mean it's consistent and it's it's, it's just enjoyable all the way through. It has that flavor punch I really enjoy. I mean, I, I would say for me, and I know all palettes are different, I would say this is probably medium plus edging on full, full body. Um, but yeah, it's it's great. And this is the first uh, experience I've had with just any of the hot cakes line from HVC. So it's truly oh, really? something. Your first, of the, first hot cake? Yes, yes. Well, I, I'll be interested for you to try sometime one of the regular production hotcakes and yes. tell me how you think they compare. Because certainly hotcakes are great cigar, but hot chocolate cake is a whole nother level if you if you yes. ask. Yes. So, um, what would you say your your palate is? Would it would you say it's more on the medium, medium plus, full? You know what's really interesting is that I find more and more that. I don't have a particular palate. I really find okay. that my palate goes in cycles. Okay. Which yeah. I, you know, I find that very interesting that it's like you really, it's, it's held true for, for years now since I started smoking that, um, you know, once I got past the, the phase of exploration is wanting to try as many different things as possible. I really get into month long, uh, since where all I want is Padron, right? Something okay. like Nicaragua Padron. All I yeah. want are rich chocolate and Maduro's. And right now, I'm in a Connecticut shade phase. I really can't get enough of good Connecticut shades. And I'm just going to take a second to note, I think Connecticut shades are the most underrated cigars, especially in the American market. And to an extent, yeah. I really do understand why. It's mm -hmm. like I had this conversation with Brian the other day. If you are to grab it random a cigar off of a cigar uh, shop shelves that is Nicaraguan or is a darker wrapper, right? Something a little stronger. Odds are it's going to be pretty good. You know, it's going to mm -hmm. have good flavor. It's, it's got enough oomph to, to give you what you're looking for. There's a lot of Connecticut shades on shelves if you're just grabbing at random that are not that great, that are not necessarily objectionable, but just really bland, right? There's not a lot going mm -hmm. on. Right, right. 
but I, I realized that once you know what you're looking for and you know the yeah. kinetic shades that have a lot of complexity and do have a fair amount of body, uh, I really think nothing can compete with those. And we've got some kinetic shades that are coming in the club that are just some of my favorite cigars I've ever smoked. Okay. On, and I'm really excited to uh, keep introducing people to uh, how good Connecticut shades can be under the right circumstances with the right one. Right, right. Well, and, and on that tail end, actually, I had a, a favorite Connecticut of mine yesterday. Um, I don't know if you've tried it, the Porcelain by Black Label Trading Company. No, actually, I haven't had that one. That is a phenomenal. They, the um, the binder is Pennsylvania Broadleaf, so it okay. has a touch more of an oomph to sure. it. Um, but it is, flavor is insane. Only one size. It's like a Corona size, um, but definitely worth checking out. What did you say the name of it was again? Uh, porcelain. porcelain. I'm going porcelain. to... Uh, I'm going to uh, definitely smoke one of those uh, very shortly now because I, I yeah. definitely want to try that. It's 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 like phenomenal. I said, I'm craving a lot of good Connecticut cheese now. So <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> and uh, a few questions I normally ask to some of the people I interview, just out of curiosity. Um, mm -hmm. Do you remember like what cigar it was that kind of that made it that like one in the beginning when you were smoking cigars and you're like, Oh, this is different. Or this is really leaving an impression that kind of turned you on to smoking cigars more regularly. Yes, I definitely do. It was the uncle Lee by uh, room 101 map. Uh, that was a phenomenal cigar. That was when uh, booth was still rolling uh, at, at Kamat or with the, not Kamat, but with, uh, uh, with, with the Aroas. So it had okay. a lot of green tobacco on it. And yeah, boy, that was a really good cigar. And I remember okay. that I'd smoked it several times and really liked it. And I'd, I was, it was so early on in my smoking uh, journey that I wasn't retrohaling it. I didn't know how to retrohale. And so the first cigar that I ever like sat down, like practice and taught myself how to retrohale on was the Uncle Lee. And uh, it took that cigar from like a level seven to like a level 10 in my mind. So I'm like, wow, okay. I really understand now. Like, I got unlocked. What everybody talks about when they say retrohaling changes things. And so yeah. for a couple of reasons, that cigar will always be something very special. I uh, have a special place in my heart. Sadly, it's out of production now, but I uh, have very fond memories of that cigar. Yeah, definitely. Uh, we have uh, on Instagram, um, Nicole saying that um, uh, she's watching this actually on her break. And she says the J London is an amazing one as well. Yes, J London makes outstanding cigars. We've okay. got the on the uh, on the Pravada shop now we're super excited about that it's uh damn good okay okay um and then we have another question saying when is the v cutter releasing i don't know <laughs> what you're talking about <laughs> it, i'm assuming this gentleman is actually a club member uh but yeah i i have had several several yeah. people that are now regulars here uh that were started as Pravada um club members and came in with a Zycar uh, Pravada cutter. Absolutely, they, they love it. Um, yeah, one, I've got one right here. Uh, yeah. This, uh, this is the uh, second edition right here, the blue one. Each one of our, we've had four Zycar uh, uh, of the straight cutter uh, limited edition drops now in Pravada, and each one is, is a different color. So you always know which one nice. you got. Nice, awesome. And uh, another question is, how many, how many cigars would you say you normally smoke on a daily basis? It varies. I would say um, somewhere between one and three usually. Okay. I try not to do more than three because um, a lot of what I'm doing is I need to be able to uh, really keep a, a fairly clean palate because I'm testing a lot of uh, test blends all the time for future right. projects. And so I'd like right. to be able to not have a, a tainted palate so I can really taste yeah. uh, the, the native flavors. But um, there, there are days, honestly, where I don't, there, I'll go sometimes a week without smoking cigars if I'm not doing a lot of testing. Uh, and I kind of like a, taking a, a reset every once in a while because you come back and kind of have a different uh, appreciation for cigars then. Yeah, no, definitely. I, I, I know for me, I'm about the same in that one to three, depending if we're doing an event, depending if we're not. Um, we, last night on Instagram, a bunch of our uh, members here at the shop, we tasted the Grimalkin from House of Emilio. Uh, the first Here's time- about that. Yeah, it's a, it's a, it's a great smoke. Um, and the first time I had it is I was on a business trip in Arizona and there's a, sh a small shop called Embargo, phenomenal shop. 
a huge mm-hmm. room 101 carrier. And so I picked one up, up, but I mean, that was like my four hour of the day. And I'm like, I am, my palate's worn out. Like I'm not noticing a lot of nuances. When you get to that point, or if you have gotten to that point, what are some of the things that you do to clear your palate? Like as far as, is there anything you drink, anything to eat that is a palate cleanser? Sure, yeah, because I mean, um, I, I, there are certainly days where I do go beyond three. Like that, uh, there, there are certainly days that, that are well beyond that. When I get to that point, I really find that just seltzer water, sparkling water with a little bit of yeah. citrus or lime uh, does a really good job. And one trick that I like to do also that I get made fun of for sometimes if I do it too aggressively, but I like to, um, if you ever like, I've uh, been like to a wine tasting and they tell you to like, uh, area in your mouth where you kind of like pull air through with the liquid in your mouth to uh, get to bubble at the tip of your tongue. Uh, I'll do that with the sparkling water because it just makes the bubbles go crazy then. And it really yeah. is a good cleaning uh, of cleaning your tongue a little bit. If you just slurp on the water, it's kind of, so do it quietly. <laughs> Nobody, <laughs> you know, you don't need to yeah. get aggressive or anything like I do sometimes, but I think that's a, that's a good trick. Gotcha. Gotcha. Um, Jimmy is saying that Kyle Gellis at Warp says that he uh, uses seltzer water as well when testing blends. Um, for me, I, I've also, um, the gentleman, I think his name is Travis from Altidus. I know that he is, he's recommended stuff like almonds and stuff like that before. Um, but I, I, more and more, I'm hearing more seltzer water being the kind of thing that really refreshes the palate. Absolutely. And you know, something I actually have started doing recently that's been really good about keeping my palate pretty clean regularly is I've actually, uh, I got a tongue scraper uh, and I've been uh, scraping my tongue a couple of times a week. And it does a really good job of just cleaning your tongue um, in a way that a toothbrush really, really can. I find that if I use my tongue scraper a couple of times a week uh, when I'm yeah. brushing my teeth in the morning, it uh, really just keeps my palate a little more, a little more refreshed and it uh, okay. makes the breath smell better too. So all yeah. around. Uh, a win-win. Nice. Now I know that this is probably a question that is not the easiest to answer. Some people hate this question because um, it's it's kind of asking what is your favorite, who's your favorite child. But if out of the LCA releases we've seen, is there any particular for you personally that stand out or that are your favorites? That is a really good question. Um, I would say I mentioned I've been on a real Connecticut shade kick for a while, and I think that the uh, the Shishabon, the cigar that must not be named. <laughs> I, I mean, that was a, a great cigar. I've got a couple of those tucked away in my humidor, and I don't know why I'm smoking because I thought that was just a perfect Connecticut shade. Hochi, Hochi Blanco did a great job on that one. And I also really enjoyed the uh, the trail mix from Curavari. I just thought that was yeah. a yes. cigar. Perfect so, example so- of what, what blending looks like when done masterfully yeah and, and it's funny the trail mix is, is is an enigma to me because it is one of the most complex cigars that i think we've we've had a tasting for um it takes you on a journey of different flavors and for some reason i don't even know how this happened i mean i think maybe we received a little more but we had some in the shop up in the like later months and the people who knew about them would come in oh, i'm here for my trail mix and and they they knew about it we're out now but for some reason it lingered for a bit and Certain people kind of saw it as the gold mine of, the, of picking it up, um, but we received a lot of good feedback on that trail mix cigar. It's so you just touched on something I find really funny, which is like it just seems like so, I, I've got like you know so many months of experience now and with the LCA and then talking with all the shops, and it seems like every once in a while one cigar that's sold out everywhere else just lingers on at a couple of shops for for really seemingly no reason. I think people just start to assume that they must be sold out at a certain point, right? So they stop yeah. them. But then it's like you'll see somebody posting a Facebook like, hey, wow, I found like nine ITs at this uh, shop in Wisconsin. Yeah. Oh my God, it creates a whole frenzy. And the shop owner calls me like, well, what'd you do? I just got like 30 phone calls asking for asking for <laughs> IT. It's always amazing yeah. when that situation happens. Yeah. <laughs> well, and, and Thai tea, I think that was also a very limited run. Um, phenomenal stick. That was what definitely one of my favorites. And I, I think though, the one that's always stuck for me, that's a hard one to beat. And I think it's just because of my palate is the, uh, Nuevo Comienzo. It's just excellent. Excellent uh, cigar. That Paul Stulak has some of the best tobacco coming out of Nicaragua in the industry. End of story. That's it. He's got yeah. some of the best tobacco Nicaragua has to offer. 
Yeah. And I mean, right now, because I know that we, we had gotten the extra bundles for you and we have, I think, like 15 left. Um, but it's one of those that I and I tell a lot of people, I'm like, if you get a chance, don't just get one because I anticipate this cigar aging phenomenally. Like if you can if you can let it rest, it'll even be that much better. And so. I that was a, that was a, that was what I call the uh, the uh, uh, ancient LCA. I call Death Bucket One and and Paul do like ancient LCA, and I call it <laughs> Monster on uh, modern LCA because Cookie was the first time we did a the nationwide drop date, which is what uh, really you know has become the model for LCA. Okay. But, uh, I thought it was really cool that we got to do uh, on the Paul Stulak the dual release where you had the one that was the one time production that wasn't coming back, and then. Yeah. You the, the exclusiva, which was a free release just for LCA shops, and now is regular production and is uh, available um, uh, at a fair number of shops. I thought that was a, something really cool that we got to uh, got to do. Basically, introduce this uh, this new line from a great roller to uh, to to everybody ahead of schedule. Nice, nice. Nicole saying that she head out on Instagram Live, but she's on her way up to pick up her hot chocolate cake cigar. Um, and I would advise you guys watching as well to do the same. Is it, click on the link in this video or go to our website. You'll see it on our front page. Phenomenal cigar. Um, and it's going to be a hard one to beat. I'm just I'm just saying, out of the net LCA drops, I think it's going to be a difficult one to beat for me. It's it's a great stick. It's. Uh, I'm very excited to keep bringing more stuff to LCA+. Plus. It's. Uh, I am more excited about this than I have been anything in a long time. I think this is going to be really good for, for everybody. Awesome. Well, Clark, I want to thank you for joining us on the show. I know you guys are really busy, um, but I, I appreciate you taking the time. Right now, it's what, about almost 5 o'clock out your time? Uh, it is 5.50. Wow, I didn't realize oh. we were already been talking for, for that long. Time <laughs> flies when you're having fun. When you're yeah. But um, I'm really excited to see you next uh, at LCA in a week. That's going to be great. Uh, and if we can you know, just have a bit of conversation, a cigar, that'd be awesome. Um, Absolutely. Please, yes. And in, if it's ever, if you're ever in the, the area of California, we would love to have you up at the shop. That would just be phenomenal. Absolutely. I will definitely make sure to come visit sometime. And if you ever find yourself in Orlando, please let me know. I'd love to give you a tour of, uh, of Pravada headquarters and, uh, and show you some good hospitality here. And uh, thank you again for having me on. It's always a pleasure to be on. Uh, I hope we can do this again, uh, maybe in a, in a few months again. Definitely, definitely. All right. Well, you take it easy. Thank you for the cigars. And I'll let you know what our response for the tasting of the barbecue pig is. So thank you so much. Excellent. Sounds good. Take care, guys.